I did not. It looks like I'm looking at not that. Uh, good evening, once again, again. And after technical di- difficulty, you are welcome to another episode of 10 Minutes with Ronald, the show that nobody asked for, yet somebody is watching. Now, I don't know if they watched the first take and realized that I just repeated myself. <laughs> they may not. So it wasn't saving really, anything. So. Yeah, that's true. I really just hope that the feed works on this one. I do too. Oh, we got two viewers. Oh, check oh out. okay. Richard, All right. Richard, how's it going? I don't know these people. Richard so. just got married. Oh, so. congratulations. Congratulations, Richard. Richard. All right. Uh, so, first of all, let me just begin with a little bit of a rant. Um, today was a horrible day at work, and as you can see, I'm still in my work clothes, meaning I came here straight from work. So, I worked almost 11 hours. Hey, Mallory. I worked almost 11 hours, so I am, like, worn out. All right. Uh, but we're still going to give them a quality show. No, we're going to give them the most quality <laughs> show that we possibly can at this level of tired that I am. <laughs> okay. Let's but work, let's work delirium with. might work to our favor. You never know that. Yeah. So we got to be careful. I All right. So it. I embrace it. for those of you that tuned in last week, uh, we talked about dating from the female perspective. I'm sorry, from a woman's perspective. Uh, and this week we will be talking about dating from a man's perspective. Uh, last week, my, my guest was stop looking at yourself. You doing the same thing? Yeah, but I'm like, what happened last week? I'm the producer. What happened last All right, so last week, <laughs> last week uh, we talked with Jessica Taylor, and we asked her some questions and talked a little bit about dating from a woman's perspective. And we decided this. I decided this week that we would talk to a man and get a man's perspective on the same questions, so we could get an idea of uh, you know what the dating life is like out there today. You know, you hear a lot of stuff about dating in general. You hear a lot of stuff about what people are doing, what to do, what not to do. But we don't talk to enough single people to get a real feel on how real it is out there, and it is real out there. It can be, yeah. Uh, so we talked a lot last week, and I, I know you got a chance to watch the video. Um, any initial thoughts before we get started with some of the questions I have? Um, I thought it was a great interview. I think Jessica did really well. Um, she was very honest, and I appreciated how honest and kind of off the cuff she was. Um, there was some, I had some, there was some interesting disagreements that I had with what she had to say, and I'm sure you'll through questions kind of unearth what those might be. But, okay. Uh, also, this is a lot of pressure. Okay. Like you found a man, and I was the guy that you found. Yeah. Uh, so, we'll see. Okay. I'm smart. I'm smart. I know stuff. Debatable. Uh, okay, so let's talk about it. Uh, sure. So online versus in real life. What do you prefer? What do you use? What are your experiences? Um, online. Uh, online is very interesting because online gives you an opportunity to kind of just kind of be good with words, mm-hmm. which I think is one of the things that I kind of lean on a little bit the most. Um, you don't run into a situation where somebody is, where, where you're completely, well, I guess that's not true. I was going to say you don't run into a situation where somebody is completely turned off by your looks, mm-hmm. but, um, I mean, I'm a good looking guy, but, um, I guess if you post a profile picture and that's all I know about you until I read your bio, I guess, then I'm basing it off looks too, which makes, I've had more success on, on apps, on, on, uh, online dating than I have had in real life, which is interesting, IRL. IRL, but Earl, and it's interesting that that's the case because actually online dating can unearth some of the most horrible people you've ever because and it kind of turns you into a bad person too, right? You log into Tinder and then you just oh no, she's not cute, she's not cute, she's yes. not cute, she's cute, but I read in her bio that she's a vegan. I don't care about that on there. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? And and she hasn't even got a chance to tell you like, hey, I'm a vegan, but I'm a passive vegan. Like yeah. you won't even get into that because you've already left swiped her. And I know a lot of guys will do the thing where they just right swipe everybody yep. <laughs> until they get a match and then they'll just deal with it as they come. But to me, that seems like cheating too, right? Because that means, that means I'm not being selective and I'm just waiting for you to come along and then I'll decide that I don't want you after I've already engaged you. Absolutely. In real life, though, approaching people is kind of weird. Because uh, I can't shake the fact that I'm a stranger, mm-hmm. right? And I, and I always I have a bad habit. I don't know if it's a bad habit. But I always see things from their angle first, too. Like when I'm approaching a, a young lady and I think it's attractive, right? So you, know. you make the assumption that, why is this like, guy coming? Yeah, 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 yeah. If yeah. somebody approached me and would look and looked like me and was like, I'd be like, you know. But, but <laughs> nah, I'm thinking, you can't, 
But I'm thinking like I'm a woman, right? So I'm yeah. thinking like, and and this is the this is a false assumption that I make on women is that is, if you're a woman, you can you can kind of just get a guy if you want one, right? If you want a guy, if you whether you want a long term relationship, whether you're just trying to hook up, especially if you're just trying to hook up. I hate the term hook up. I feel like I feel like. Let's continue. Um, um. I feel like you you could just kind of make yourself available for that. Absolutely. As, as a matter of fact, there's probably already, and we can get it, there's probably already four or five dudes in your life that are just waiting for you to just give them that opening. So you don't have to go out and look for anything. That's absolutely And accurate. then I feel bad because I'm like... Well, let me just interject real quick. Sure. You don't have to go out and look for anything if you don't want quality. Okay. And, like, and I think that's one thing about girls is that if they don't want quality... They could literally go out tomorrow and find someone who wants them for all of the right or wrong reasons. Like, they could go out and find that person. I agree. But I, but I also think every girl's got at least one guy by the side who probably is quality. Oh, but I know him for too long. Or, oh, we go way back. Or, mm. Oh, you know, this, that, and the third. And mm. He's too cool and too cute, whatever. Yeah. You know, they're Steve Urkel. Yeah. Where it's like, as soon as he took the glasses off, you were super interested. Yep. But up until then, you weren't. And, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. You like who you like, you don't like who you don't like. I'm just saying, when I approach a girl, these are the things that are going on in my mind, probably 100% to my detriment. Yes. Right? So when I approach her, I'm like, she's probably just at the bar. She has a rough day. She just wants to get a drink. She just wants to hang out with her friends. She just yeah. came to the club to dance and party. Yep. And here I come. Yeah. You know what I mean? Here I come. <laughs> all there. Yeah. You know, probably messing up the first sentence completely. Like, you know, hi, nice to do. Yay, Michael. And she's like, so, the only times I've been successful, and I, please interject, I'm mm. I'm sure. The only time I've been successful in real life is if it's a communal gathering, like friends. Yes. And the person that I'm trying to make conversation with, the person I'm trying to pique their interest, mm. um, is a friend of, you know, have, we have a mutual friend. So I can always kind of, I can always kind of lean in and out depending on how it starts to go. Yeah. If she's kind of interested, then I'll lean more on the, hey, maybe we should hang out. And if she's not, I'm like, oh yeah, well, I just came here because I know, I know John. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I just, you know, I don't, I didn't really like you either. Like, you know what I mean? And I think that's unfair too because I think at that point you should just be honest. A lot of times when dudes get rejected, they want to kind of, they want to turn it into insults and this, that, and the third. And, yeah. You know, you just need to, Except that you, she's not interested, and do it humbly. But it's it's. it's I would agree. I think um, for people like us, I think another good thing about the group experience is that we're able to put our personality on display first. And typically, if we can get a couple people laughing, yeah. then it's like, oh, yeah. who is this guy? It's like, hi. Yeah, I'm Ronald Young. Yeah, it's, it's like, like ten minutes. <laughs> it's like that's my target. So you guys remember the thing? Yeah. <laughs> and then they're all laughing. I'm like, you see? Or you got to do the best one where you just get one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ronald! You know, you gotta get one of those, and then get but, him to come over that way. But if you can do that, then that works great. And here you are. You know. So all of that being said, what do you prefer? Do you prefer face to face, or do you prefer uh, meeting online? I prefer face to face. Okay. But I suck at it. <laughs> so what I'd like to do is get my stats up on okay. face-to-face. Okay. If I could do that, mm-hmm. then I'd, I'd probably stick with that. So what's your plan? Are you going to go out and try to meet more women by like, walking up to them? Or are you going to try to have more friend parties? you got to, you know. Persuade your friends to throw parties? <laughs> <laughs> and I have a problem with being social anyway, mm-hmm. right? I, and I've been working on that a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, you can ask any of my friends, like, and normally they'd be like, do you want to go? And my answer is already no before they even get to whatever the thing is. But now I'm just like, yeah, let's go on the boat. Let's go. Let's go skiing or whatever. Marcus, you spelled confidence wrong. All right, so uh, you got to have confidence. I, and how many, though? How many confidence do I need to have? You need more than one. <laughs> more than one confidence. Okay, thank you, Marcus. Uh, so you can get them up. <laughs> no, that's true. Okay, so let's talk about after you've actually met the girl, you you you've hooked up you've not hooked up but you've met her you guys have connected you've linked up. Not, you've linked up okay. you're vibing now yeah. how often do you talk to her like what's the initial connection what's the etiquette for you oh I remember when you asked this question to Jessica yeah um maybe it wasn't fair that I watched Jessica maybe we should have been isolated no no it's, it's okay Jessica, <laughs> Jessica's watching now she's gonna rebut next week oh wait, yeah, are we yeah. just gonna go back and forth until, well, we'll see. until mom's spaghetti I'm probably gonna let her have the last <laughs> word on okay this. and that's like, fair and I appreciate I, as a gentleman yeah, I think that's chivalry. Absolutely. Um, oh, it's funny you bring up chivalry. 
<laughs> Hold on to that, but continue. Um, I what what's in my heart? Like what I want to do is just whenever I think about y'all, I just hit you up, yeah. or whenever I'm like, or or if we share like a moment. Then whenever something like that comes across, I'm gonna like if I see a meme that reminds me of it, I'm gonna send it to you. If I see a joke, I might send you a video or something mm. like that. That's what I want to do. Yeah. But society dictates. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to do. But I don't want to do what Jessica was alluding to before, or not alluding to. You plan outside it was, which is that whole creep factor, right? Mm-hmm. Like. You don't want to be too, you know. What I mean? But I feel like that's what I would want. If somebody was into me, mm-hmm. I want them to be like, "Hey, I'm into you. I'm into you heavy. Mm-hmm. Like, I think this is cool, and I want to do whatever this is with you as often as possible." Okay. Yeah. And then let me decide. Okay. Well, that. Thank you for being honest and up forward, up front. I'm not interested in that, or I am interested in that, or okay, let's really back. Like, I feel like that's an honest conversation, though. I feel yeah. like the. Um, Feeling out the temperature of, of the relationship. I feel like she'd be an open and honest conversation. But instead, what happens is the girl's like, yeah, no, okay. And then she goes, what? Ghost. <laughs> oh! So, so, ghost is back so, in episode two. <laughs> so you Return don't of the ghost. <laughs> Revenge of the ghost. Ghost Chronicles. <laughs> ghost Boogaloo. Sponsored by Ghostbusters. Coming in theaters this week. In theaters? No. No more free sponsorships. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do not watch Ghost. Better yeah, man. Yeah, Stop letting yeah, people yeah. from watching Ghost. <laughs> they didn't pay for that spot. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I feel like my honesty gets re- the response to my honesty is fifty percent, maybe less than fifty percent, thirty percent their honesty, seventy mm-hmm. percent just like. That's weird, and I'm not even gonna tell you that I feel like that's weird. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna talk. I, I haven't experienced a lot of ghosting though. I haven't experienced a lot of that. What I typically, what typically, now I've ghosted, but typically what happens to me? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Bye, Mallory. Thanks, Mallory. Send somebody else to watch the show. No, society, Alicia. <laughs> um, no. Um, Typically, what'll happen is they just kind of fade away. Mm-hmm. It's typically not just a, I'm out. It's like a, oh, all right. So, you like TV? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. A couple hours later, <laughs> okay. And then they just kind of, and to, it, almost, it, it almost seems like they're doing it on purpose because it gets to the point where they're like, where you're like, I don't even want to talk to you anymore. What are we talking about? We're not yeah. talking about anything. Yeah, we're clearly not doing so, anything. Yeah. So, let's just, yeah. you need to cut it off. So you're saying, I think what you were alluding to in the beginning was that you would rather talk to them as much as possible whenever they come to your mind or whatever. Um, And I think uh, what Jessica was talking about last week was the creep factor. What I don't like about that, and you could kind of talk to this a little bit, is that instinctually, when I want to talk to a girl that I'm into, especially if the feeling is reciprocal, it's reciprocal, then I want to talk to her. You know what I mean? I don't want to have to wait. I don't want to have to follow rules. I don't want to wait three days. I don't want to have to send a text, not call. I don't want to drop a voicemail or send a carrier pigeon or write a letter. I I want to just talk to her. And I feel like most girls that like are into that will respond in kind. But I feel like what everybody's talking about when they talk about thirst and the creep factor, they're talking about they're talking about a guy who they don't want to really they don't really like. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. And I think when they when and and, and and to speak to Jessica's point again, when they think about when they talk about, oh I'd love to be pursued and wooed and stuff, they're literally thinking about a guy that they want to do that. Exactly. They don't want to be pursued and wooed by everybody. Yes. But I feel like I don't know, man. You ever had, like I, you ever had like been using Dropbox and it says you're running out of space? Yeah. Or like, I feel like my brain does not have the capacity to hold games. Yeah. Like I like that's when I run out of space. That's the first thing that gets purged. Absolutely. So for me, I just want to be honest. Like. There's so many things where you have to play a game. Like, you got to do office politics, and there's mm-hmm. politics and friends. Mm-hmm. I feel like there shouldn't be relationship politics. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I either like you or I don't, and I'm honest about it. Or I ghost. But the thing about ghosting that I at least appreciate is that it's immediate. Yeah. It's not, it's not, I can be honest. You, were, you in a way, were honest because mm-hmm. you honestly disappeared, mm-hmm. right? You didn't, you, you didn't respond to my text messages at, in a way that would make me think that you're still kind of interested but maybe busy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause, because then you forget, you, you gotta remember, like people have real lives that I'm not their whole life. Mm-hmm. Right? So if I text them and they don't respond for six hours, my assumption is, mm-hmm. my assumption is never that they didn't get it because it's 2016. Yeah, you right? got the text. I, we, like, we, don't even act like you didn't we don't get the text. You know you got That's the text. BS. Yeah, you that didn't, BS. come on. Um, but they saw it and they were busy. They mm-hmm. were in the middle of something, they're driving, something yeah. like that. 
um, I've opened text messages, had every intention on responding to it, and just not mm-hmm. it's for hours later. So that's what I assume. But if I, you know, but I, again, I'm not too cool to text you again. Absolutely. Six hours later, I'll be like, hey, what's going on? How are you? And I won't even address the fact that you didn't respond to my last text message. Oh. I even do that with my friends, <laughs> Alicia. So <laughs> she's watching. I know. Good. Uh-huh. Good. Respond to that. I like when a guy thinks, anyway, I'll let you deal with that. Okay. But, um, It's, it's difficult. I just I don't think there should be politics involved. I don't think there should be a, a part of the getting to know you because that's what I'm doing. I'm getting to know you, so I need that opportunity to do mm. that because I don't want to get to know you for six months because just like Jessica said, and I've seen this happen many times. Mm. You talk to them for too long mm. and they, they just roll into friends. Absolutely. Like there's just a, there's an imaginary line. Yeah. Maybe she knows where it is. Maybe she doesn't. Yeah. But if you chat with somebody for too long, even if you go on dates with somebody, but you guys are having like too good a time, yeah. then you just roll into friends. It's, yeah. it's, I, and I think it's because people were meant to have friends. Yeah. Like you were meant to involve, you know, fellowship and be cool with people and, and, and experience new people, but you weren't meant to date all of them. Mm-hmm. And I think naturally you just kind of roll into this like, oh, that's my friend. And what and what happens is is you're like, yeah, let's, you know, this is our fourth date or fifth date. Let's go hang out here the third. And they're like, yeah, okay, cool. And you get there and like Bobby Bryan and Susan are there. And they're like, oh yeah, I thought we just hang out as a group. And no, that's not a date. <laughs> no. What you just done is you <laughs> pushed me off. <laughs> and, and, and I know it. I've recognized it. This is not it's not like you're doing this casually. Mm. Once you invite Bob, Brian and Johnny and Susan, mm. I know where I am. Can I just, uh, just a little off topic, but a little on topic at the same Absolutely. time? Mm-hmm. This girl today hit me up on Facebook and was like, hey, you know, I needed, I saw you at the gym yesterday and I need to talk to you about something. Uh, do you mind if I give you a call? And I was like, oh, absolutely. I gave her my number, not knowing where this was going. I was like, oh, well, I, I don't know what, I don't know what she wants, whatever. Do you not know this girl called me with a pyramid scheme? Yes. So, yes. She's like, oh, hey, Ron. You know, I was talking to my friend, the colonel. And he was, I'm like, yo, man, are you serious with this again? Why are you always coming after me with this show? Yo. But my point is, like, I, there's nothing worse than being lured into a trap. Yeah. And I feel like with that, like the friendship trap, when it's like, if you know a guy, especially if you know, if you know a guy is interested, then please don't, like, please be upfront with him and say, hey, you know what? I'm not interested in you like that. But I do like you as a friend. Don't be like, yeah, we can go to the movies and then show up with Bobby, Ricky, and yeah. him or, and say we're all going to the movies. Or just show up with Alex and another guy and try to slide me over to Alex. You'd be perfect. You got to be perfect. I don't like that. Yeah, I, do not. It's only happened to me off. once. It's only happened to me once, and I think I went to the bathroom and just left. <laughs> and I never talked to her. And the girl didn't text me. She didn't reach out to me, and I never reached out to her. I think she knew she was wrong, uh, and she was like. Were both of them there, or was or did you? Go, so we were. Was at, it a bait and switch? Was it Dave and Buster's? It was one of those. I think it was even Jillian's mm-hmm. back when Dave and Buster's was Jillian's out, 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 of, out of the Rundle Mills. Yeah, and it was one of. And we were young. I don't know anything about Maryland. It's, but it's okay. Me. We were young, and at that time, you get kicked out at like nine. Yeah, and so I think we had gone there like just before that, hoping we wouldn't get wouldn't get kicked out. That's not really part of the story. It's just yeah. showing you that we were young and stupid. But uh, I think we were at the pool table or mm-hmm. something, and I just walked away. I was like, oh, I gotta use the restroom. So she was there with her friend, or there was only two? She was there with her friend, and then eventually, like, some other guy kind of joined us. And at first I thought, maybe they oh, met the guy wow. there or something. But I feel like... So she double-dated you. I, yeah. I got, I got forced double dutch. It's and like you're about like, to jump in, and she pushed me. <laughs> That's what happened. It was like... Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. It's like how most brown people learn how to swim. I just got pushed right into the pool. Yeah. There was nothing I could do. No, that's not cool. I think um, um, nobody wants to be... I learned how to swim. That, <laughs> nobody wants to be falling <laughs> off in general. I think, like, again, no. I think the more people that could just be up front, and I think that's a lot of the theme that we're getting. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about pursuit, because I think what we're finding, especially after talking with Jessica and now talking to you, is that pursuit is not what we think it is. Because I think a lot of girls... Uh, say that they would like to be pursued. Why don't guys, you know, why aren't they chivalrous anymore? Why don't they go after us? And I think the, or, and we could probably agree on this, I think it has more to do with the guys that are pursuing them. They don't want to be pursuing them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you yeah. speak to that a little bit? Well, of course, when you say that that's what you want, you're picturing somebody you want to do that to you. <laughs> you're not, and I think the reason that that's not fair, and I'll say that for both sides, but we're talking about we're women right now. Uh, Hit the close button. Does it close? Oh, oh, oh. Technical difficulties. They can still hear us, though. Oh. 
All right, good. We're back. Right. Sorry. All right, we're back. Sorry, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Oh, don't knock over the light again. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so where was I? I was talking about uh, pursuit, the qualifications to pursue. Yeah, yeah. When you're thinking about that, you're thinking about somebody you want to pursue you. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the, it, you need to, you either need to be open mm -hmm. to all pursuit mm -hmm. or not. But I know that there's I can already I can already see Alicia <laughs> I can already see Alicia. I, mm -hmm. That's just the first person that comes to mind when I think of who's gonna re rebuttal this. Um, but. See, Amanda just said that. It's always the creepers who pursue. It's never the yeah. guy I want to pursue who hangs around. Okay, so let, let's let's issue this challenge and Thank see you. if you agree with this. You can expound on this. All right. I would like to see, really, all right, I'm going to go into this. I would like to see this. Women love to be pursued. You're a liar. Don't go into it. I would like to see this. I would like to see more women. The next time you, any single woman out there, the next time you see a guy who is interested in you that you think is a nice guy, but for some reason, I just don't know if it's there. I encourage you to let him pursue you. And when I say that, mean say yes to a date. Now, again, I say this on the, I say this with the caveat of you don't owe anybody anything. Ooh. They are not entitled to, uh, to a date with you or any of that. So if you don't want to go, don't go. But if you're ever on the line, if you're ever on the line and you're like, hey, Michael, you're a great guy, you know, but, you know, I just, you know, if you're at that place, if you really think that he or myself or any of the guys, you think they're a great guy, then I think you go ahead and go on that date and you let him, let him do some pursuing and see if you find yourself getting wooed. And I agree with that, mm -hmm. but you have to, if that's going to be, if this is the challenge that we are that we are um, expecting. This is the 10 Minutes with Ronald challenge. If this is the challenge, the caveat is, is you have to go into it only with romantic expectations. Yes. Do not, during his pursuit, push him into the, the friend zone. zone. Yes. And, and, with, and, you, and he doesn't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? You gotta tell Because him. you gotta be like, listen, stop pursuing me right now. Listen, <laughs> yeah. I wanna be friends with you only. Exactly. But if he has, a, if, if it's a situation where you don't know what it is. You can't put your finger on it, but you just you don't you just don't think he's he's quite there. I encourage you to give him a chance. Now, again, you don't have to. Probably won't. But I I I, I would be interested to see what happens when you try it because I feel like with a little bit of pursuit, there's a lot of opportunities to to have special women in my life that were just they just kind of let it go. Well, I think the other thing is like people don't understand and. I think we're about to stumble onto something here. I don't think people understand how romance works anymore. Mm -hmm. Because the whole idea of being romance isn't that you're already in love with the person. Right. It's that they came to you and you fell in love with them right. by whatever actions that they took. Right. So if a guy decides or a person decides that they want to be with you and they start taking these steps to say like, hey, I want you to know that I want to be with you or hey, I want to get to know you or whatever. That's how you actually start to fall in love. And I think, like Relly said, social media has destroyed everything. And because we're consuming with our eyes initially and saying, I already want to be in love with how he looks, you don't ever get to like experience love like Blossom and have somebody actually come in and pursue you and you realize at some point you don't care how he looks because it's about how he makes you feel. I agree. And I, and I think that it's got to be, a, if it starts out at this high, at this peak, mm -hmm. It has to go upward. How do you make it go upward from there? And I think the point is, is I need to, you got to let me show you how much I can. I can tell you, but how many people have told you, right? Yeah. And then still wasted your time. Let me show you how much I care, but also don't call, don't call it thirsty, right? You can't have it, you can't have it both ways. Let me show you how much I care. Let me court you. Let me call you. Let me, let me stop by. Let, like little stuff like that. I've seen girls always like, I wish he would just, you know, it's cool that he just, he was on his way home from work, so he stopped by. He just wanted to chit-chat for like five, ten minutes before he went home. But yep. the fact that it was in person, he didn't just call me, he didn't just text me. Absolutely. But again, you're picturing mm -hmm. the guy you want to do that. Absolutely. But let the guy that you're not that, you you don't know about, let him stop by and just and just chat with him for a second. Come yeah. on, you guys can walk around the neighborhood. Yeah. I mean, I've done these things. Yeah. And I don't know what impact they had they yeah. had but in my mind i was like okay cool this is like me like this is me one spending time with her like it's a random opportunity to spend time with her but two it's an opportunity for me to show her that i care because normally what i do is i get off and i go home yeah or i get off and i go here I get off and absolutely I go or normally you know 
I wouldn't, you know, you know, stuff like Good Morning Text. And I don't know how far down oh, the line good that comes. Text. I don't know how far down the line that comes. And again, you're not going to be a mass text or whatever. But yeah. just stuff like that to let you know that I'm thinking, of you, thinking about you. Because if somebody's not thinking about you, they can't, they won't be able to pretend they are. Absolutely. If somebody is, if you are not uh, at the forefront of somebody's mind, they won't be able to pretend like they are, like you are for too long. You know Absolutely. what I mean? I know some guys, I, I know a gentleman who set alarms and stuff to remind him, but that only going to last for so long. No, because you know it, I mean? it takes, but even in that, at least it takes work to do. It does. It did take effort for him to set that up. That's kind of creepy, I guess, too, but. I do have to address. It. So, Amanda, you're talking about, um, you're saying that guys don't want to hear the truth. So, I don't think that's necessarily the case. It might be guys, like certain guys, because I can tell you this. Most guys will appreciate if you say that I'm absolutely not interested in you. I think the weird gray area that we're talking about, to be specific, is to say the area where you say, I think you're a great guy, but, or you're just too nice, or any of those things where it's like, if you actually think that this person is a great guy, then you you should give them a shot. Or, But you don't have to. Again, you're, we're not entitled to anything. We're not owed anything by women, but we're saying that if there is if there is any inkling in you saying that you think this person is a nice person, then why not give him a shot? But th that being said, if the chemistry not there, it's not no. there. And I, okay, so let me okay, so chemistry, you right? Can't force the chemistry. Chemistry and what's the other word people use? Vibes. Biology. No physics. No, those are classes. Physics. School. Biology. Classes. Bioinformatics. Oh, talking about science now. Yes. Um, Bill Nye. Uh, no, I mean, people talk about that all the time, but I feel like that's something that, I feel like chemistry and all of that, I feel like that's, that is, that is the interpretation of love, the interpretation of relationships that we have grown into in our, in our generation. But really, I feel like love is something that you choose. So compatibility is what you should be looking for, not vibes. I feel like vibe, I feel like you can get a bad vibe from somebody the first time you meet them, and later on, that's your, that person's your best friend. Absolutely. Think about how many people you know from high school or from college who didn't like each other, didn't get along, didn't know each other, and now they're best friends. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. What is that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you imagine if that's how it works? I, it does for animal in the animal kingdom. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I feel like it's something that you... Uh, okay, so this is a conversation that I got into with a friend of mine the other day. And I didn't want to believe her, but the more I had the conversation with her, the more that I uh, had kind of many conversations with other women that I know, is about timing. Mm -hmm. Oh, timing. And my understanding of timing is, is pretty much you're at the mercy of whatever, wherever the woman is in her life. If she's ready to settle down, then you'll get a completely different response from her than if she was just having fun or just, you know, exploring different men. And, you know, that's not awful. Um, exploring different relationships okay. with men and things like that. And so you could, I have a friend. I have a friend who is now in a committed relationship with a young man that just three or four years prior, she was not interested in. Mm. And we had this long conversation and she was like, basically, he didn't really do anything different. I was just, I was comfortable with him. I was ready for a commitment. And the twinkle in his eye was just a little different. And I really don't think he did anything to be yeah. honest with you. But I think she, it was just, she was just ready. And that's, a, but I mean, I think that works for men too, but I think it works for women way differently. Um, for men, it's like ready to settle down versus not. But if I think you're cute, if I think you're attractive, if I like your personality, I'm going to pursue you anyway. Just where we're, where I, where, how far I see us is mm. going to be the difference there. I think also, and my sister just said, love is absolutely a choice. So if we could just talk to that and think we got to wrap up soon. But, mm. and I do have to make some announcements as well. So everybody stay tuned. Um, a couple things. One, love absolutely is a, it, I, I think Every we start morning, off. Yeah. I think when you start off, it's an instinct. It's something like, I love this person. It's something that you realize. However, like after you do that, you have to make kind of a commitment to remain in love. Yeah. And when I say that, I mean, that's where you make the choice to say that despite all the flaws and all that, I'm going to love the action, this person, as opposed to love the feeling, love the verb or whatever it is. Love the noun. Love the noun, this person. So when you like are love the verb, this person, that's when you're like, you're actually taking steps to continue to keep the relationship intact, yeah. to continue to do the things that uh, 
it takes to have a successful relationship. Yeah. And I think that's after you're angry, after all of the other things. After they've off. done that thing that annoys you, yeah. and you told them to stop, and yeah. they didn't stop. Yeah, you have they to choose. Stop, yes. <laughs> you have to choose that that's who you still want to be with. And, and so that's why I feel like, I mean, I don't want to say too much, but that's why I feel like the opportunity to, I feel like you got to give somebody space, right? Absolutely. You got to give them the space to, to, to not exceed your your expectations. Because honestly, based on the definition of prejudice, that's what you're doing. If you if there's somebody who you would give a chance to, if not for, mm -hmm. then then you're being prejudicial because you're not giving them a chance. You can categorize people all you want to. That's a natural human. Nature. Absolutely. You see somebody walking down the street, they look a certain way, you've categorized them. Yeah. But not allowing them to break free, break free of mm -hmm. that categorization, not allowing them to exceed the expectations you already placed on them, I think it's, that's when it becomes restricted. Absolutely. And for women, again, the way that I feel is that's not a huge deal for them. Well, I guess Jessica, the way Jessica described it, she had kind of been working at it. But I feel like women always... Can, if they're ready for a relationship, I feel like they can find one. Absolutely. But for the young men who are pursuing them, if you just gave them a, a piece of space and a little bit of, of leeway to confirm what your suspicion is, right? Mm -hmm. Give them a second to, or give them a, 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 give them a chance to, again, break through the barrier that you've created around them. Mm. Um, I just think we'd have a more open and positive dating situation. And I think it would happen more often in real life. So I think dating apps, again, the people would, wouldn't use them so much because it's a setup for superficiality. Absolutely. <laughs> um, actually, that's kind of a good final thought, but do you have any other, other things you want to end on before uh, we wrap this up? Um, no, I don't think so. Do you have anything <laughs> you want to plug? Um, Matchpotential.com, matchpotential.net, excuse me. Poda Bison. Po Poda Bison. Poda Bison. <laughs> uh, thank you for being on the show this week. Thanks I really appreciate you. Um, Thanks for inviting me to your studio. Oh, we're in Mass Potential Studios, by the way. <laughs> 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 your setup is really good, and if you weren't in Laurel, I would have all my shows here. Um, so I definitely want to make some announcements before I go. Um, the first thing is I've been talking, I've been toying around with a name change for a little while, and uh, I have decided on a name, and the name is... Ten minutes with Ronald. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's amazing. That's so, how did yes. you come up with that? Okay, so I just want to expound into that, and the reason why you know somebody's calling. They messed awesome. up everything. Oh, okay, all right, there we go. So the reason why I decided to keep the name Ten Minutes with Ronald is because I am launching a podcast, and the podcast is going to be cut to ten minutes. So what you guys are actually watching is behind the scenes, <laughs> 10 Minutes with Ronald. So it's still the same show, but it'll be chopped down to actually 10 minutes. So with that, uh, I am going to be starting a Patreon campaign, which is basically kind of like Kickstarter, but a little different where you guys can contribute monthly. So look for that coming in the next couple of weeks. I know I probably lost like half my viewers with that, they were like, oh, if it was free, we gonna do it, but we, we, gotta pay, we ain't doing it. But they can still watch it. Yeah, you guys can still watch it. Nothing, yeah. you're never gonna have to pay for this, you never have to do that, but if you want to support me that, and we'll have should. details about that coming down the road. And you should do it, because this guy, put, he put in a lot of work. You should see the setup he's got going on. He put a lot of work into this. Yes, there's... So help the show grow. There's at least three things I set up in this room, so... It took a lot of effort. But anyway, uh, I just want people to know that we're continuing. I'm going to continue to do the show. Um, I have a new theme coming up for uh, the month of August, which I'm very excited about. And I hope you guys all tune in. And again, oh, Richard stayed the whole time. Oh. That's what's up, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, keep supporting, keep watching. And for those of you that aren't able to watch it live, uh, catch it on YouTube so I can get those views and get those views up. Share with your friends, all that stuff. Uh, okay, everyone's <laughs> in time. Again, podcast will be 10 minutes long, keeping the same name. But anyway, uh, again, this has been 10 Minutes with Ronald, the show that nobody asked for, yet somebody is watching. You guys have a great evening. I'm watching. You got to turn off the camera. All right. Because I can't just, go. I'm going to stay just like Yes, All but right. you got to go turn off the camera. <laughs> I'm still in the frame, guys. What you're seeing right now is just movie magic. How do I, what do I do?
hit end, finish, finish, end. I don't see Are you finished?